LeBron James is on the file for a tweet that included a picture of the officer involved in the shooting death of 16 year old Micaiah Bryant, along with the words, you're next. The tweet also included the hashtag accountability. Now, some people thought it was tied to the conviction of ex officer Derek Chauvin, while others saw it as a call for violence against the officer who responded to a 911 call. Body cam video allegedly shows Bryant wielding a knife as she lunged at another woman. Now, James deleted the original tweet, uh, and he followed up with two more saying this anger does any of us any good, doesn't do any of us any good, and that includes myself. Gathering all the facts and educating does, though. My anger still is here for what happened, that little girl. My sympathy for her family and may justice prevail. In the next tweet, he said, I am so damn tired of seeing black people killed by police. I took the tweet down because it's being used to create more hate. This isn't about one officer, it's about the entire system, and they always use our words to create more racism. I'm so desperate for more accountability in all caps. Athletes speaking out about social issues isn't new. Of course, LeBron is on the forefront of that right now, but think Muhammad Ali, Jim Brown, Bill Russell, just to name a few back in the day, and now it's more magnified thanks to social media. So joining us to talk about it is a, a man who does not stick to sports and we love him for it a friend to the show a washington post columnist and two-time new york times best-selling author john feinstein welcome back to bnc john let's talk about this tweet first of all lebron puts this tweet out and politicians jump on board and saying that it's you know divisive and that he's calling for violence but the raiders put out a tweet right after the, the uh conviction saying i, I can breathe now I, I i know the floyd family said it's okay but it was met with a lot of vitriol. I don't remember any politician saying anything about the Raiders tweet when it first came out. So what are your thoughts on both? Well, LeBron had it exactly right uh, after he took the initial tweet down when he said people will use this tweet as an excuse mm -hmm. to attack black people and to attack athletes for speaking out. I, I, I have a, a text right here that I got this morning from a golfer referring to LeBron mm -hmm. as a, a racist and as a thug wow. because of that tweet. Wow. And uh, that's the way a lot of white mm. America reacts whenever black people say, yeah. hey, you know what? What's going on is wrong. And uh, Michelle Roberts, who's the head of the NBA Players Association, made a mm -hmm. comment after the Chauvin verdict the other day in which he said, well, this is really good, but let's see how long it is until we have the next shooting. Well, it happened that night. There was another shooting, yeah. mm -hmm. the one you just mentioned in Ohio. And yesterday we had another one in Ohio. So it doesn't seem as if the police, white police specifically, are learning their lesson from what happened to Derek Chauvin in any way, shape or form. It just continues. And I understand. I mean, I'm a white person, but I feel angry and frustrated by what's going on mm -hmm. and by the fact that so many white people, many of whom voted for Donald Trump, this isn't a coincidence, uh, say any time a black person speaks out, they're wrong, we're right. Well, guess what? That's not true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not yeah, all right. You know, John, every time you show mm -hmm. up here, you earn another plate that you get to take home from the barbecue because, you know, what all you right. say, I subscribe to, you know, 99% of it, unless you're rooting against Georgetown. Uh, but I want to talk about Brett Favre. <laughs> You know, I used to love this guy, his mm -hmm. grit, his just down home, you know, the, the whole branding of him at some point. He's now weighing in on the Chauvin trial, saying he finds it hard to believe uh, that the fired officer, the now convicted felon, the murderer, Derek Chauvin, <sighs> meant to intentionally kill George Floyd. Now he goes on to say, look, the guy had thrown in the towel, uh, you know, it was wrong. But that part where he's going inside the mind of this officer, nine minutes, 29 seconds, John, on the neck, the man's dead, pleading, people are screaming, help him. What are we to make of Favre, who also tells his fellow athletes to, you know, stick to sports, stay out of politics? He's been called a racist. Unpack it for us. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I, I, I will defend uh, Brett Favre's right to speak out, even when I disagree with yeah. him. Um, and, and we want yeah. pe athletes to speak out, regardless of what mm -hmm. side they're on. But his first comment, I can't believe this was intentional. He was not convicted of intentional murder. He was convicted of unintentional second degree murder. Now, what you mm -hmm. just said, Sharon, I think is very important. 
Nine minutes and 29 seconds, okay? We can't get inside Derek Chauvin's mind, but there were people there pleading mm -hmm. with him to stop. George Floyd was begging for mercy and calling for his mother. To me, that's intentional murder, mm -hmm. all right? But I am not mm -hmm. a lawyer, uh, and, and mm -hmm. so he was convicted of second degree unintentional murder. I'm very concerned that the judge is gonna give him a minimal sentence. He can give him up to five years. Yeah. Legal experts are saying it'll be 10 to 15 years. I hope that's not the case. But Brett Favre, let, let's be honest, people have the right to be stupid. And Brett Favre has the right to be stupid. And 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 yeah. I, I again I would defend yeah. to the death his right to speak out and then I would vehemently disagree with what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, including that golfer yeah. that sent you that text calling LeBron a thug. You tell him I said kiss my, you know what? Because <laughs> oh that's my just, goodness, yeah. I know it's we'll just give right. You a so whatever. Pause. To, to <laughs> I just had to have that moment for a second. So whoever it is, you tell well, him Mike. No, Hill but Mike, kiss, you're right. That's black. what's so frustrating. <laughs> that's what's so mm. frustrating. Mm. And 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 any time. You know, it, it goes back to Laura Ingram's signature idiotic comment, you know, mm -hmm. shut up and dribble. And, and, and she dribble. should just shut up. And, and right. you know, the right wing, Fox feeds the fears of the right wing. That's what they do. And, and, and they don't want athletes to speak out because the ath most athletes are going to disagree with their positions. And I've been working on a book, as I think you guys know, for 16 months now mm -hmm. on race in sports. And one of the things I have, there are two things I've consistently found. And Mike, you probably experienced this, and Sharon, you probably experienced this. There is no, no one I've interviewed so far, I've interviewed about 100 people, has not at some point experienced an encounter with a white police officer that would mm -hmm. not have happened if they were mm -hmm. white. You know, the yep. old DWB, mm -hmm. yep. driving yep. while black, happens all the time, right? And the other thing mm -hmm. that I've encountered when people find out I'm doing this book is, why are you making race an issue? Jeez, mm -hmm. yeah. race has been oh, an issue since 1619, yeah. for crying out loud. Oh, John. Mm. Uh, yes. Just... Yeah. <laughs> he, I, I just, you you got to talk about what's, what's happening, John right? John Feinstein in 2021 did not create race as an issue. It happened long before yeah, I you're, came you're peddling. You're, you're peddling race, John. I wonder what, and That's you're me. outspoken. You can certainly hold your own. But I wonder, you know, you get that that text that you got calling LeBron a racist. What is it like for you? You know, I look at Popovich, right? Um, he's around black players all the time. He's entrenched with them. So I suspect um, he's a little more comfortable. He's very outspoken. What, and I'm not saying you're not yes, comfortable. I'm just saying, what is it like for you as a white guy who just says what you want to say about these issues that not mm -hmm. all white people agree with and they challenge you on, what does that look like? Do you engage? I, sometimes I engage if it's somebody I know, uh, like this golfer, mm -hmm. uh, if, or if it's somebody who I think is trying to make a reasonable point, isn't just screaming, mm -hmm. you know, how dare you yeah. mention race in, in this world. Um, but in some ways to me, Sharon, it's almost like a badge of honor. Like, and mm -hmm. Greg Popovich is a great example. So is Steve Kerr, the coach of the Warriors. So is mm -hmm. uh, Stan Van Gundy, the Love coach of the, of, the, of the Pelicans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one of the yes. things that's happened since George Floyd's murder is we're finally getting some white people to speak out mm -hmm. and to protest. And the biggest problem with the mm -hmm. 2017 anthem protests mm -hmm. was that so few white players engaged uh, they express mm -hmm. sympathy for mm -hmm. their black teammates but very few knelt and most nfl fans are white nfl owners are white mm -hmm. and so they were like how dare you you know i i'm sure you guys heard mm -hmm. this too how dare you take away my enjoyment of football by kneeling before yeah. the game starts well in, in no oh, way did it just want to the game it was a peaceful protest and right. it, it almost felt to me like these fans think of football players specifically black football players the way the Romans thought of the gladiators. You're out there to entertain yep. me, and if you die in the meantime, no big deal. And But now, at least mm -hmm. with the George Floyd thing, we are seeing more white athletes and coaches start to speak out. But you know what? We need a lot more. And teams. Well, I can't wait for And leagues. Book. Yes. Yep. Yes. And, and one of the things that was nice, Mike, was, some, was teams tweeting on – on Monday after the show and forget the Raiders mm -hmm. for a minute. There were a number of teams and leagues that did tweet. Mm -hmm. This is the right verdict. And right, again, right. that's yeah. progress. But I also I also had friends of mine who I think of as reasonable people saying, well, 
I hope they don't celebrate too much, you know, and, and start looting or something like that. And I'm like, why is there an assumption that black people are going to go over the line, but you never assume that white people will go over the line? And of course, there was no, no looting and no rioting because the right verdict came down. And, and thank goodness for, right. for the right verdict coming down. But boy, is it frustrating. And I can't even imagine how you guys feel because I, I can sympathize, yeah. but I can't empathize because I've never been black. We yeah, but you know what? And thanks for saying that. Day. We do live it, but it it it, mm. it feels better when somebody like you, who's in the spotlight, just just tells it like it is. I can't tell you what that means, and and I do hope mm -hmm. that more um, white Americans who who don't harbor, who are no Derek Chauvin's, will step up and say, you know what? No, uh, uh. I'm not it's going to be on the yeah, you, scene. You, you. Like I said, yes. Can't wait for your next book, um, Washington Post. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, thanks for starting your day with us. Go Hoyas. More starts your day right after the break.